Hello, so today I will be talking about contemporary issues and science and technology and society in the, Filip in the Philippines. And for today, I will be talking a specific uh, example of that issue uh, entitled Magnetic Tactic Bacteria, Attractive Solutions to Toxic Heavy Metal Contamination from Small Scale Mining. So, uh, Magnetotactic bacteria are unlike your typical prokaryotic cells, in which there are membrane-bound organelles inside their cells. So this is your typical prokaryotic cells. But your magnetotactic bacteria, inside their cells, they produce intracellular magnets. That straight line, those are actually magnetic particles. And magnetotactic bacteria, they come in uh, different shapes. They can be spirulum or uh, oblong, and, and their, their magnetic particles can be magnetite or gregite. And um, different magnetotactic bacteria, they produce different shapes of magnetic particles inside their cells, and they are uh, perfectly shaped. Uh, examples of the shapes are your bullet shape, uh, they can be irregular or hexagonal, and uh, there is no uh, biotech company which can synthesize as perfect as the shapes of uh, magnetic particles produced by magnetotactic bacteria. So these perfectly shaped magnetic particles are only biogenically produced. So if they are biogenically produced, so the production must be under intricate and precise biological control. So this is the strain uh, from Japan, Magnetospirillum magneticum AMB1. So uh, it's a spirillum, and this picture represents uh, one uh, magnetic particle. Okay? So it, it, what is so striking about this prokaryotic cell is that uh, aside from the outer membrane, the lipid uh, bilayer, each magnetotactic uh, magnetic particle is also surrounded by a membrane, similar to that in the outer membrane. So the, the magnet itself is called magnetite or gregite, but the, the magnet, the magnetite plus the membrane is called the magnetosome. And here's a picture of a chain of magnetic particles from strain AMB1. So why do these bacteria have to produce magnets? So they are very unusual. But so what the theory is because they use it for magneto navigation or magneto reception, meaning they use the Earth's magnetic field lines in order to uh, traverse, to migrate. Parang kalsada. Na, yung kotse dumadaan sa kalsada. Sila naman dumadaan sa magnetic field lines. Yung train dumadaan sa rail track. Ganon. So sila, yung magnetic field lines ng Earth ang ginagamit nila para mag-swim. Okay? So uh, where can you find them in the environment? So magnetotactic bacteria, they hate oxygen. So you, in, if you have a water, water level, so we have a zone called the oxygen anoxic transition zone. Meaning, that's the zone where the, there is very little oxygen until there is no oxygen. That's the, the borderline between the oxygenated zone and the unoxygenated zone. So from there, down, down is, there is totally no oxygen. That's where you can find them. Okay? So that's their first trait. They hate oxygen. The second is, of course, they are magnetotactic. They react to magnets. Yeah. So if there is a magnetic field over here and there is very less or no oxygen, they will migrate towards that place. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there are magnetotactic bacteria which actually uh, require very little oxygen. So if you put them in a tube, like right here, and this pink one is the level of oxygen, yeah, increasing uh, gradient of oxygen, and you put a magnet here, they will, uh, they will stay here. But if, if the level of oxygen, if you put a magnet over this place, they will migrate just right here, not near beside the magnet because they hate oxygen. They only require very small oxygen. But for strict anaerobe, meaning they hate, totally hate oxygen. They, don't, they require zero oxygen. So if you put a magnet over here, 
they will swim there and there is uh, zero oxygen. And then if you put a magnet on the other side, then there is oxygen right here, but uh, this one, they, they require zero oxygen. So they will not swim towards the magnet. They will just turn around because they do not like the oxygen. Unlike the other one, they require, they are micro aerobe, meaning they require little amount of oxygen. So they can swim just a little bit to the magnet. Yeah. So what are the biotechnological Applications of magnetotactic bacteria. Okay, first they can we can harness what they produce outside their cells. Second is we the magnetic particles themselves. We can isolate them and use them for biotechnological applications. Will which I will uh, discuss later. Number three, the whole living cells, the the magnetosome plus the cells and their magnetotactic behavior. So how do we tap them. Okay, so uh, number three, whole living cells and their magnetotactic behavior is my uh, main uh, topic which I will present. This is a graph of bio uh, publications about biotechnological applications throughout the years. They are used in bioremediation, meaning they are used for cleaning the environment and cell separation, uh, drug, this is for, uh, in, for biomedical use, enzyme mobilization, food, hypothermia, and image contrast. But let us uh, focus on bioremediation, which is a very uh, contemporary issue now, especially here in our region in the Cordilleras. Okay. So these are the magnetic particles. You can isolate them. And magnetotactic bacteria are actually found in many different environments. They are found in fresh water, in, even in a lake, in a river, and this is from an estuary and from marine uh, environment. So that means they are actually ubiquitous. They are unusual, but you can isolate them from any type of uh, aquatic environment in the sediment. Yeah. So this is the latest isolated magnetotactic bacteria, magnetoglobulus multicellularis, and it was isolated from a brackish water in Brazil. What is so unusual about this magnetotactic bacterium, they are actually colonial. So each, uh, this is the cross section, so each, sec each, each slice here, each section is, represents one cell. And this is the SEM of the cell, and it's flagellated. They are multicellular. So, all over the world, magnetotactic bacteria have been already isolated. So uh, the question is, do we also have magnetotactic bacteria in the Philippines? Okay. In the Philippines, we have diverse aquatic environments. And it's in these environments where we can find magnetotactic bacterium. So me and our st my students, we uh, endeavored to find out if we do have magnetotactic bacteria in our aquatic environment. Uh, this is in Bolinao, Silaki Bolinao, in Nagsasa Sambales. Uh, and this is in also in Nagsasa, in an uh, inland river, where we successfully for, first successfully isolated magnetotactic bacteria. So first, uh, in order to isolate them, we have to review what are the two conditions for magnetosome formation. First, they require low or serial concentration of oxygen. And second is they require extraordinary high amount of iron. The amount of iron they require is 200 times more than your typical bacteria. So if you put that amount of iron which the mag magnetotactic bacteria requires into, for example, an E. coli, the E. coli will burst. But mag for magnetotactic bacteria, it's okay for them. That's because they use it to form the magnetic particles. So the isolation is actually very simple. We get uh, a sediment and then we just attach a magnet. Okay, and after a week, we remove the soil or the sediment and the water. And what remains in the, in the magnet, yung na magnetize sa side ng jar, we take them and most probably nandoon yung mga magnetotactic bacteria. Okay, and then we, we, we get that and then we put them in what we call a capillary racetrack. We 
we resuspend the magnetized uh, solutes and then we uh, we dip a cotton para matrap yung mga bacteria doon and then we put them in this tube and then yung mga cotton na trap yung mga bacteria na trap sa cotton and then basically this is the principle if this is the magnet the bacteria will uh, migrate towards the magnet which will separate them from the non-magnetic so uh, we did try to find genes through what we call polymerase chain reaction for MAM-A gene, which is uh, the gene for magnetosome formation, and we, we found them. I have two students, Marge Messina and Erika Chua. They found uh, magnetic particles sa cells, and uh, we identified them at the molecular level. Ayan. So uh, this is when we cultured the cells. Uh, this is a magnet, this round thing, and uh, our ordinary bacteria will uh, settle at the bottom because of gravity. But if you put a magnet, this, this speck of biofilm, they remain there be because of that magnet attached to the tube. Okay, yeah. And they have flagellum also, and uh, yeah, yung mga TEM. Okay, and we identified them also. Okay, through 16S. Okay, so now, uh, how do we apply this isolated magnetotactic bacteria? Here in, in Benguet, uh, there was a recent uh, tragic issue which occurred in Itogon. Okay, yeah. And Itogon is a very uh, nice place. It's an, uh, one of our um, ecotourism destinations. Yeah. So, um, just a background of, the, uh, of this Cordillera region, uh, you can see from their artifacts but that long ago they, they used metals, they used them for as, as their accessories, as musical instruments. But when Ompong came, the tragic struck. There was a tragic uh, landslide because the land was uh, riddled with small scale mining operations. So, many died because of the landslide because the soil was so loose because of the small scale mining. So this is just one of the consequences of uh, unregulated small scale mining. So uh, our study site is in uh, Luneta, Antamok, Itogon, Benguet. Okay? So one of the, the consequences aside from landslides of uh, small, unregulated small scale mining is uh, actually the release of uh, toxic materials like acidic mine water, which of course uh, ends in environmental destruction and health problems to the community around these mine tailings. Yeah. So one of the products of mine tailings, what, uh, one of the toxic contents of mine tailings, it is uh, cadmium and it destroys the ecosystem because of it's very toxic. Uh, it interferes with the food chain and of course with the human health. Okay, it, uh, it can uh, give painful disorders once humans are exposed to toxic levels of this heavy metal. Okay, and of course also respiratory uh, dysfunctions. So this is the site. This is a mine tailings lake. It's, it's an open pit mine tailings lake uh, made by uh, the community. And this lake is not uh, is a lake where all the mine ta tailings throughout the decades uh, they accumulated in that lake. Okay, so it's a very toxic body of water. So that's where we uh, tried to isolate magnetotactic bacteria because that means that these bacteria thriving in that toxic environment have become adapted to toxic. Uh, conditions. So ito po yung mga ibang pictures with, which we took uh, and these are uh, toxic materials which they use for uh, processing the ores from small scale mining and they go down that lake which I showed you. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's uh, mine tailings uh, dripping into the lake. So mapapansin nyo rin, it's green. So during the dry season, nag yung water and uh, we tried to collect along the banks, a sediment to collect magnetotactic bacteria. Those are my students. We, so we isolated the 
the magnetotactic bacteria to bioremediate the cadmium in the uh, lake. Uh, um, but of course, not, not exactly in the lake, but we had uh, an in vitro experiment uh, in which we have different cadmium concentrations in, in vitro, and then we seeded the bacteria. Because remember, magnetotactic bacteria can uh, assimilate high concentrations of iron. So we found out that uh, magnetotactic bacteria can also assimilate high concentrations of other heavy metals aside from iron, and that is cadmium. Okay? So after eight, uh, so many hours, after 24, 72, 12 hours, the cadmium in our medium decreased, meaning uh, na, 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 uh, ina, ina assimilate nila yung cadmium. Inaalis nila. They remove the cadmium from the solution. And these cadmium are in toxic concentrations. And uh, our final conclusion is uh, we measured uh, until 1.84 parts, parts per million, which is actually 360 times higher than the borderline toxic level of cadmium in humans, which is 0 0.005 ppm, which is set by the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry. Meaning, uh, ma e epektibo ang bak bak bakteriyang ito para linisin yung ang isang tubig na uh, riddled with cadmium. Yan. So we identified it as acenetobacter, uh, yung bacterium na yon. Ito naman po, uh, inaral din namin yung uh, lead. At ibig lang sabihin nito, Habang ito yung toxic level ng lead, pababa siya habang nagro-grow yung bacteria. Typical bacteria will die pag ganyang karaming lead, pero yung itong magnetotactic bacteria na another isolate na bubuhay siya habang inuubos niya yung lead. And lead, aside from cadmium, is also another toxic metal. Okay, so that means pwede rin niyang linisin or alisin ang lead na toxic sa environment. So, iba-ibang concentration yan. Ito naman, uh, higher concentration and much higher concentration. So, yung red, uh, nabubuhay yung cells. Tapos, ina yung blue, yun yung pag-decrease ng lead. Okay. Ayan, in-identify din namin sila as uh, acenetobacter. Ayan. We, we named us the UPB mag-06. Doon naman sa cadmium, UPB mag-05 ang tawag namin sa strain ng magnetotactic bacterium na yon. Okay. So, ito po yung lake. Papapansin nyo, sila po ay green uh, dahil may mga microscopic na lumot dyan, which we call microalgae na nabuhay dyan. Na kahit napaka-toxic, sila ang, ang, ang nabuhay dyan, kaya green yung tubig. So, aside from the magnetotactic bacteria, nag-isolate din kami ng microalgae kung kaya, kaya nilang mag-assimilate ng toxic heavy metals like cadmium. Kasi napaka-green ng tubig, that means uh, adapted sila dyan. So, ito po yung na-isolate namin na uh, microalgae from that uh, mine tailings lake. At ito yung growth nila. So, uh, itong pangalawa, yung red, kaya niya pa rin mag-grow uh, at uh, a higher level of cadmium. Yung blue siya yung walang cadmium. Itong bars na to, ito yung cadmium na initial concentration na nilagay namin. Tapos after 24 hours, ito na yung cadmium concentration. So about 50% kaya niyang uh, i-reduce or kainin yung initial amount ng cadmium doon. So, another uh, uh, ecotourism destination is dito sa Cordillera ay yung Sagada because uh, maraming attractions doon like your hanging coffins, yung waterfalls, ganyan. So, sikat na sikat ang Sagada sa buong Pilipinas na pinupuntahan kasi malamig, maganda ang tanawin. Uh, yan, may mga rice terraces din. Ito po yung pakyat doon. So sadly, sa likod po noong pababa doon sa falls, meron pong small-scale mining operation doon. 
So it, it's uh, and it's been operating for around 30 years. So and this is one of their uh, processing houses. Yan po nagdi-drip pababa yung mga mine tailings nila papunta sa ilog sa baba. And uh, this this is the side of the mountain. Uh, when you go down the falls, you're just looking at terraces. But if you go uh, on the other side of the uh, of the track going down the falls, you can also actually see this site, this sad um, mine tailings, uh, mine small scale mining operation. Yeah, these are the mine tailings. Uh, at uh, th those mine tailings, they flow into a river like that, going down uh, a big uh, community a, a, a called Bontok. Okay. There are uh, human settlements here, especially in Bontok. These pictures, me and my students, we had a, a local guide. Yeah. So ito yung we set up three stations, station one, doon sa small-scale mining operation, then downstream, and Bontok. Uh, yung river doon. So nag, we took uh, sediment and water samples and we found na may mga toxic levels sila of, of cadmium. And from the same uh, spots, we isolated bacteria. This time it's not uh, bacteria, uh, magnetic bacteria, but uh, just bacteria na ordinary. So you can see that the water is still and it's very clear. So, what we found out first is doon sa station B kami nakakita ng high level of cadmium toxicity. Uh, not in Sagada where the mine tailings, uh, mine tailings directly come from. But doon downstream in station B between Sagada and Bontok. Remember, I, I told you that the water is clear and still. Doon naman sa may Sagada, the current is so strong. So na, na, they were washed away by the current and then nagsettle sila doon sa station B. So does it mean that clear water is clean water? They can, be, they can have toxic uh, materials there. Okay. So, uh, in summary, what we found out is uh, even at very high level toxic concentration, different toxic concentrations of cadmium, the cells can still uh, grow okay, and assimilate uh, the cadmium, just like the magnetotactic bacteria. Uh, but after 15 days, the, the cells die. That's why it's very And we... Uh, identified this bacteria as Delphia okay, at a molecular level using 16S okay, sequencing. So this study was actually funded by the Cordillera Studies Center of UP Baguio, yung study on magnetotactic bacteria. Okay. And I would like to uh, uh, all uh, give credit to the students who work on this with me. Uh, we started it in Ateneo, Laura Hain and Camille Edmilao. And then um, we have more students. Yan sila. Okay. Yan. And, and ito yung nag work. These are the students who work in Itogon Benguet, who, who isolated the magnetotactic bacteria, which can uh, assimilate cadmium, can do bioremediation with cadmium. Yan. And uh, this is the next batch who followed up the study. And these are the students who work on uh, cadmium bioremediation in Sagada. That's it, and thank you very much.